The most important part of a sewing machine is threading it correctly and winding the bobbin and putting it into the bobbin area correctly. So I'm going to take you through every single step, including how to use the needle threader. Yay, this Singer Fashion Mate 3342 has a built-in needle threader. I'll show you all the tricks along the way. So starting off, let's talk about the quality of thread that you choose. Now, I know this is a simple machine, but if you use good quality thread, Thread, it's going to work 10 times better. So if you've got a box of thread that grandma gave you from 30 years ago, yeah, let's not use that. Let's just treat yourself to some new quality thread. The more you pay for thread, the better it is. So if you're paying a dollar a spool, um, just say you're gonna get a dollar a spool worth of quality, which is not very good. Trust me, I've had people just change the thread, the machine works perfect. So I'm gonna just start off by this particular spool going up here. Now we do have two ways a spool can go onto this machine. We have what's called the horizontal spool pin holder, which as you can see, it wants to move around. So you will either be matching it up with the larger spool cap that comes with this machine or the smaller spool cap that also comes. So depending on how small or big the end is, you'll pick appropriately. For this one, it's actually gonna be the bigger one and we're gonna slide it all the way on until there's no gap between the spool and the cap. If you leave a little gap, that thread will find its way down in there and it's not pretty, it gets tight, it breaks and pulls your knee. Oh, it's just not good. Okay, so next, this thread is what's called crosswound thread. You can see little X's on the spool, but there are brands of thread that are what I call stack thread and the thread lays right next to each other on the spool without the X's. If you have a stack thread, I want you to pull out the vertical spool pin. You can put the little felt pad on there and put it here. Then the spool is gonna be on here and it will spin off of it towards the first guide that we're going to. So quality thread usually is crosswound, by the way. So that's one way to know when you have a better quality thread. So next, whether you're here or here, we are always gonna go under the first guide, which is number one, and we're all going to follow the numbers. If you are threading the machine, you'll follow the gray numbered arrows and numbers. And if you're winding a bobbin, you're gonna follow the blue pictures. So the only time that you follow the blue pictures for winding a bobbin over here is when you need to come around the first part. This is so important. This is the pretensioner, and you need to click the thread in there. Can you hear that little extra click? And then follow around it clockwise. So it crisscrosses over where it started, just like the picture, and we're headed this direction. On your bobbin, when you pull a bobbin out, a couple of these holes are real, some are not. That's a real one. You're gonna take your thread from the inside out, just like the picture shows, inside out, and place your bobbin on the bobbin winder. Push it all the way down till it clicks, and then push it to the right till it clicks a second time. If you just hold the thread, just like in your hands, just right above the bobbin, and then step on your foot control. That's gonna start it spinning. So let me go back here while I'm winding a bobbin, is talk about this pre-tensioner. If you don't have it under the pre-tensioner here, it's not clicked in. If you've ever wound a bobbin and it's really fluffy, loose, and almost just kind of hanging out, that's uh, not, not good for the machine, just doesn't always feed off the way it needs to be, is you need that nice tight wind. See how nice and tight that is up and down as it goes? Now hold on to this thread until it breaks or reach for your scissors and then cut this thread off. What you want is no thread uh, left sticking up above there. So see how after I've wound a little bit, I can cut it and then there's no little tail. That tail will get in the way if you were to leave it when you put it into your bobbin area. So you can see it's just gonna wind nice and full. We're gonna fill it all the way up. That's a, <laughs> that's a fast bobbin winder. That's awesome. So as soon as it stops spinning, then we will stop so you can see how it doesn't want to spin anymore. Now it's mostly full, that's probably about right. If you find your machine doesn't fill it as full as it could, this little screw and stopper can be slightly adjusted. I mean, you change it by just a hair and it will fill a little further. You just don't want to overfill it. So at this point, take your scissors, cut the thread, move your bobbin back to the left and then pull straight up. So here's a little trick about your bobbin. 
When you wind a bobbin, if you lift it straight from the spindle here and drop it into the bobbin winder area here, it is going to go in the right direction. But let me show you what you have on the little door where we're going next. It will show you which way that thread needs to be coming off the bobbin. So you can see that that thread comes off the left side. Isn't that awesome? Uh, when it comes up and then we're going to put it right down into the bobbin area. I want to show you up close where and how to thread the bobbin case tension. So I'm going to put the door back on just so you can see how it goes on. A little press of this lever to the right and it just pops off. There's that extra bobbin we were talking about that comes with the machine. We'll just replace it with our freshly wound bobbin. But remember there on this little door, it does remind us which way that thread needs to be coming off the bobbin. So if you're just pulling out a bobbin from your um, pre-wound bobbin area, <laughs> then you know which way it needs to sit. So as it drops down, you're going to take your thread and find this little groove where the arrow begins. As you slide under here, there's a little place that is going to catch, and that is a, the tension of the bobbin area. I like to put my finger on that bobbin while I pull, kind of from about six o'clock to 7.30 is where you feel that it clicks in. And you should feel a little resistance now. I can tell it's a little tighter than it just being loose in there. And then continue to follow the little channel with the arrow on it because right down here is a cutter. So if I just pull, it cuts the thread to the perfect length. And you know what? You don't even have to bring that bobbin thread up when you are ready to sew. So next we're gonna thread the rest of the machine. I'll show you the needle threader, and then we're going to test sew and see if we did it correctly. We were last up here where we had cut the thread from the bobbin. You're gonna undo the pre-tensioner. Remember, this is only for when you wind a bobbin. So we're at the first guide here. We're coming behind the where it says number two. And before I go any further, I'm gonna just double check if my presser foot is up. So make sure that you lift that up all the way up to the highest position before you thread the machine. You have to thread the machine with the foot up. Otherwise, this next little area where the tension is, those discs are closed. If the foot is down, then you don't get the results you're looking for. They need to be open in there. So foot up when you thread. And then as you bring the thread down through where it says number three and up at number four, I want you to do this. If you get in this habit, you're gonna, your sewing machine is gonna love you. Take your thread, go back and forth a couple of times like you're flossing the machine. And that's gonna make sure this thread goes all the way down where it needs to go. Some of you out there thread very delicately and your thread just barely goes in here. I need you to make sure it goes all the way in and that is true. If you cannot see the little take up lever, it's at the highest position, take your hand wheel and turn it till it is. There we go, that's at the highest position now above the machine. And then take your thread on the right side all the way to the back and down on the left. And that way it will come right into that little opening the little hole of the take up lever. Next, we're coming all the way straight down and right at the bottom of this area is your guide number six. After guide number six, there's one more guide at the top of the needle. So I'm gonna slide my thread around that one, also open at the on the right side. Now next, let's lower down the presser foot. That's gonna give you a little bit more resistance and then also make it easier for your needle threader to work. If it's tight now, you know you've threaded the machine correctly so far. Also gives you a little bit more room. So here's what we're gonna do. For this needle threader, you're gonna bring it down and hook the thread around that little arm right here. Next, bring your left hand down all the way until that needle threader comes all the way around the needle head. Then take your thread and come in those little arms. If you lift up, it will hook the thread and pull it through. So really easy, but does take a little practice. Swoop it underneath, push down all the way, all the way around till the head comes around the needle. In on those little arms, lift up, and then let it pull it out of your fingers. If you don't let it pull it out of your right hand, well then you don't get a loop. All right, pull that loop through, lift up your presser foot, slide the thread down the middle and to the back. 
Let's see if we did it correctly. I'm gonna slide some fabric that I've doubled up. You'll see me always sewing on two layers of fabric when I'm testing out a stitch. Lower the presser foot down and step on the foot control. So I can tell my stitches are a little short, so I'm gonna to go to the stitch length and put it to two and a half. That's about normal for me. Get all the way to the end of the seam. You can do a little back stitch right here. Hold the reverse button down, let go. And here, let me show you the last little tip. You notice right now the needle stopped in the fabric for me. So that needle's gonna stop in or up or anywhere in between. If you do this every time you stop sewing and before you take your fabric out, trust me, this is going to save you a lot of headaches. Reach over to the side, turn your hand wheel, the direction of the arrows. Look at that, they put arrows on it. I don't usually get arrows. Turn your hand wheel towards you all the way until this take up lever comes to the highest position. Not just when your needle gets out of the fabric, but when this comes all the way to the top. Lift up your presser foot. Slide your fabric out to the side. Now on this side, there's a little sharp uh, cutter. You can go from the front to the back or from the back to the front and pull down, it'll cut the thread. So when your stitches look the same on the front as they do on the back, you know you have threaded this machine correctly.